What's the story, Morning Glory? What is the word, Hummingbird? Thank you so much for clicking on my channel and for joining me for another review of The Real Housewives of Orange County, Season 16, Episode 11, Wind, Dined, and Rind. And we were definitely rind. This is going to be very, very quick because Episode 12 is already out, which I haven't watched yet. But there's just a couple of things that I wanted to touch on from Episode 11. So it starts off, what well, doesn't start off with, but the first thing that I remember is Heather coming over to Gina's house with clothes. Um, um, I think it was like business attire suits or something, business, business attire clothes. Um, I, I'm not understanding what's happening between Heather and Gina. It seems like Heather has taken on some sort of a mentor role over Gina and Gina is her mentee. Um, and it seems like, I don't know what Heather is grooming Gina for or what she's training her for, or I, I'm not understanding this at all. And Gina is just like soaking it, soaking it all in following Heather's little directions and directives. And I'm very confused. I thought they were friends, but it's kind of like a big sister, little sister, mentor, mentee, teacher, student type of relationship. So I don't understand why she brought her clothes unless Gina had asked for that in some previous episode and I completely missed it, but she brought her some clothes and that, and then on top of that, she told Gina to get rid of some of her old clothes including her prom dress and her wedding gown. And Gina went ahead and it seemed like she was going to go ahead and actually do this. So they're in her closet and I don't know why Heather feels the need to tell Gina to get rid of some of her clothes. I don't know if she is like thinks that she's a hoarder or doing some type of a closet clean out. I didn't understand what was happening here. And I really didn't like that. I didn't like how Heather felt the need to tell Gina what to get rid of and what to keep. For example, her prom dress, it has sentimental reason. It's got sentimental meaning, uh, for her. Why would Heather tell her to get rid of it? But she did her wedding gown of all things. Heather asked her, well, why are you keeping your wedding gown? And she said that, you know, maybe it could be made into something else for her children or her grandchildren. Like maybe they can take a piece of it and uh, put it or sew it into a christening gown for a baby or a grandchild or something or take a part of it. And so, I mean, it, for whatever, what she doesn't even have to explain herself. If she wants to keep her wedding gown, she can keep her damn wedding gown. It's got sentimental reasons for her. Maybe that was like one of the best memories that she has was the day that she got married out of her whole entire marriage. But Heather was like, well, you know, there's people out there who can't afford wedding gowns and, you know, it would really be a good idea to donate it. And I'm just like, what? Why is Heather telling her this? this? These are her clothes. She can keep them for whatever reason she wants to keep them for. She doesn't have to explain herself to anybody, but Gina was going to do it. She was going to get rid of her prom dress and she was going to get rid of her wedding gown. And I thought that was crazy. So Heather tells Gina that she wants her to dress young and fresh, but still professional as if she's got an issue with um, Gina's current style. I don't like it when adults tell other adults how to dress, how to do their hair, how to do their makeup, how I just don't like it. Unless you specifically are asking for that type of advice, you shouldn't tell another adult, well, maybe you should dress like this or do this or do that. Everybody here is grown. Everybody knows what the hell they look like. They like what they like. They do what they do, whatever's comfortable for them. If you don't like it, you know, you worry about your own appearance. Don't worry about someone else's appearance. And so I kind of was like taking offense to the fact that Heather felt this need to like do this, uh, do over makeover on Gina. And, um, yeah, so I didn't like that at all. Emily has dad issues. Uh, she cried throughout this whole episode because her daughter is about to get baptized, I think. And, um, she's just, you know, she's just reminiscing about her own father and her own relationship with her father because she sees how Shane is like very much involved with his children and how he moved from one state to another to be closer to his kids and, um, watching Shane and how he interacts with the kids is just making Emily very emotional. And she's reminiscing about like her dad and the relationship that she didn't have with her own father. She said that her parents got divorced when she was a, a very, at a very young age. And she doesn't know if her mother kept 
their dad away from them or if their dad just didn't want to come around. But now that she's an adult, she said that her and her father have a fantastic relationship and that he's like an amazing guy. And she really looks up to him and she really enjoys his company. And so she wonders what life would have been like if he would have been there in her life as she was growing up and, you know, wondering exactly what did she miss out on in not having her father around as she was growing up. So she's very, very emotional about that. And then, um, at the daughter's, at her daughter's christening party, Gina was there and Emily told Gina that she had mentioned to Shannon that Gina said Shannon was jealous of her. And so at first, you know, it seemed like Gina wasn't that crazy about the fact that Emily told, but then she said in her confessional that, yeah, she kind of felt kind of good that, um, someone told Shannon that I, I don't know why, um, I really don't understand why Gina would think that Shannon would be jealous of her. Like when you, for, on what? I mean, y'all are basically, when it comes to relationships, y'all are basically equal. Y'all are both divorced. Y'all are currently in so-called happy relationships. When it comes to money, what's going on there? Why would Shannon be jealous of Gina? I'm pretty sure Shannon's net worth eclipses uh, Gina's net worth. When it comes to businesses and careers, it seems like Shannon is very well established. And it seems like Gina is trying to enter the business world. I don't know why, unless she's talking about I, 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 the friendship that Gina and Heather have, but Gina, but Heather and um, Shannon are not the best of friends. So she's not losing anything when Heather is spending more time with Gina because it's not like Heather and Shannon were, you know, buddy, buddy, super duper close at all. So I don't know why Gina would think that Shannon, Shannon would be jealous of anything that Gina has going on. So Shannon and John, they're having dinner and they're back at the quiet woman. I don't understand why this woman keeps going back to the quiet woman. Um, the restaurant where she had her breakdown with, um, um, well, Kelly, Kelly, Kelly Todd, uh, when Kelly Todd, this is when, you know, Shannon had come back and she had gained a significant amount of weight, I guess, after her divorce or during her divorce. And she was at the quiet women at the quiet woman with some other people. And, uh, Kelly Todd walked in and Kelly Todd and Shannon were having words and Kelly Do and Kelly Todd told Shannon, Oh, here, um, here's your plate of food, you know, go eat some more Shannon or something like that. And then Shannon shoved the plate back and said, this isn't even my effing plate. You. So yeah. And she keeps coming back to this restaurant. I don't know if she thinks it's cute. If it's like a running joke, I, I don't understand. So Shannon and John are talking about how great their relationship is in every sense of the word. Everything is wonderful. They're satisfied with every aspect of their relationship. And Shannon says that she never thought her and John never thought that they would ever be in a relationship where, you know, everything was just like going so wonderful, including the intimacy. Neither one of them has experienced intimacy as great as what they're experiencing with each other. Okay, fine. Then they talk about Gina. Shannon brings up how Gina's going around telling people that Shannon's jealous of her. And um, John did not like that at all. He was like, that really, really bothers me that she's saying that about you. And what are you going to do about it, John? What are you going to do about it? You're going to go confront Gina? Relax. And so Heather has a last minute dinner party. And this whole dinner party really is to, um, it was supposed to help. Um, Dr. Jen and Ryan get their marriage back on track. It was supposed to, uh, because she had invited two other couples who have both been married for at least 20 years. And I think one of them was, has been married for 40 years and they were supposed to, I guess at some point, I think Heather was expecting them to have very deep, um, in-depth discussions on the ups and downs of marriages and give, you know, a whole bunch of great marital advice to Jen and Ryan. Uh, but it didn't work out like that. And we'll get to that later. So when Jen and Ryan first arrive at Heather's house, at first, every single time we start off at Heather's house, I'm always like, are they at Heather's house or are they in an office building? Because some aspects of her house looks very clinical, very like a, a business building because um, of all the marble and all the tiles and all of the hard, hard surfaces. Sometimes I'm like, okay, are we at Heather's house or are we at an office building? And so they, when, so they first 
um, arrived, Dr. Jen and what's his name, Ryan. And um, there was some type of conversation about, I think Heather offered them a drink. And Ryan said that he, he doesn't drink alcohol. He only drinks water. And Dr. Jen said he's never had a sip of alcohol. And um, Terry Dubro was like, okay, so I've got to ask, are you Mormon? And he said, no, I think he said he wasn't Mormon. Um, he, he wasn't an alcoholic. He just doesn't do that. He doesn't take drugs. He doesn't drink alcohol. I guess he's just very, very clean. And so Dr. Jabro was asking him, okay, so do you take, do you smoke weed? No. Do you, uh, is it, are you on heroin? No. Are you on meth? No. You know, like asking him all of these questions, which I thought was kind of like, who does that? Who, somebody you don't even know, you don't know anything about them. How are you going to ask them? Are you on drugs? Do you do this? Do you do that? Like, that was weird to me, but he's just really, really clean. Now, this is my thing about Ryan. If he doesn't drink and he doesn't take any drugs of any kind, legal, illegal, prescription, street, whatever, what is wrong with him? <laughs> what is really wrong with him? Why does he act the way he does? Because I thought he was medicated. This whole entire time, I thought he was medicated on something, whether it was something that a doctor prescribed to him or something that he bought off the street. I thought he was on something because he's very um, dazed and confused and uh, very nonverbal. Like he doesn't really talk a lot and he looks always very uncomfortable and just like in, like he's in outer space, like he's staring off into the distance in outer space, like he's in deep, deep thought or he has taken a mental vacation to Tahiti somewhere and he's not part of what's going on in the here and now. But now knowing that he's very clean, no drugs, no alcohol, I need to know what is did he, what's wrong with him? Like, why is he this way? But maybe this is just his personality. So. Um, what else was interesting before the other guests showed up? I don't really remember, but the other guests show up, they all sit down for dinner and everyone's talking, socializing, commiserating, and Ryan is not saying a single word. And they start talking about how long they've been married and, you know, trying to give marital advice, like what's made their marriage work, you know, what's kept them together for so long. And, you know, it's a very casual conversation and everything is just flowing, but Ryan is not contributing anything at all. And so Heather asks, how did Ryan and Dr. Jen meet? And so Dr. Jen tells the story. And by this time, Dr. Jen is, you know, tore up from the floor up. She is lit. So she tells the story of how they met and then um, Heather asked Ryan, okay, so what is your version of how you met? Or no, she asked him um, because she talked about, Dr. Jen talked about how he proposed and Heather Dubrow asked Ryan, well, how did you intend to propose? And he looks at Dr. Jen and he's like, oh, you know, it's the way she said it, her version. And then Heather says, well, we want to know what your version is. You know, what was your perspective of the whole, I guess, relationship and how y'all met and how y'all got engaged? You know, look, give us your side of the story. And he just sits there as if he's like mentally not there or something. And then he says, once again, he's like, oh, however she said it. Yeah, I agree with her. And it is just so bizarre. And so... Dr. Jen continues to drink because she's been drinking since she set foot in that house. And now we're at dinner and she's just drinking, drinking, drinking. Um, the waiter or the caterer comes to refill her glass and they refill it like halfway with wine, red wine. And Dr. Jen's like, no, 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 fill it up to the top. And then she tells them and just continue to fill it up. And she is gone. Okay. She is so drunk out of her mind. Everyone else, you can tell they're very uncomfortable. They're very confused. And everybody's looking at her like very like, what is wrong with this woman? And it's not fun. And it's not cute to let yourself go like that. And it gets to a point. Oh, and then I forgot to mention this. At some point, you know, the beginning of the dinner, when they first sat down, um, 
she tells Ryan to position his chair a certain way. I didn't know by this time she was already drunk, but Heather lets us know that by this time she was already drunk. And maybe this is the reason why she was acting like this, but she tells him to position his chair a certain way. And she keeps telling him, no, angle your chair like this, scoot over, come closer, angle it like this. And so he's like moving this chair around trying to follow her directions, but you can't follow the directions of a drunk person. I don't know what she was talking about because he was sitting close enough to her. I don't know what she wanted. He can't face her directly because there's other people at the table. So I don't know what she was trying to do. And at some point when she was really, really like wasted, 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 he can't take it anymore. He gets up. And as he gets up, she's like hanging on to his wrist, like don't go. And he's like, you know, I got to step away or whatever he said. And he gets up and he sits somewhere else on a couch somewhere. And he was done with the dinner. He was absolutely done with it all. So Heather and her confessionals was like, you know, we need to like get a clear understanding of what Ryan thinks is going on. Like, we can't just take Dr. Jen for her word as far as, you know, why her marriage isn't working because obviously she's got to be contributing to this breakdown somehow. I don't know if she has a drinking problem and this is one of the, his issues with her or what the hell is going on, but there is something definitely wrong in this marriage. Even when they are alone, he's strange. When they are in public, he's strange. So I don't know if it's the cameras and being on the show that he's acting like this. And maybe when there are no cameras, he's a little bit more relaxed. But there are some major, major issues. Oh, and one other thing. Before the other guests had arrived, um, when they first got there, uh, the, the men and the women separated. So Heather and Dr. Jan went off into the kitchen. And then Terry and Ryan went into some man cave. So they're talking and, um, Dr. Jabro is asking him like, you know, well, you know, I've never met anyone. I've never met anyone where they were married to a doctor. And, you know, they talk about how Ryan is the one that deals with the children. Mostly, you know, he's the one that's at home with the kids and she's the one that's, you know, out there working. And, I think he said, Dr. Jabro said something like in a really positive light, he said something like, um, she wouldn't be, I don't know what he said, but it was something very positive. Like, you know, uh, she wouldn't be able to do what she does if it wasn't for you or, you know, you're helping her a lot with, you know, being able to take care of the household and deal with the children. He says something very positive and Ryan says, well, make sure you let her know that. So I guess he feels very under appreciated with her. Maybe she doesn't, uh, show how much she appreciates him enough. I don't know. And so then when they were at the dinner, I remember something else when they were at the dinner and I was thinking to myself, I don't know how they expect Ryan to be comfortable with this group of people because number one, they looked a lot older than him. Like these are some very established, um, mature people and he's kind of on the young side. Not only is he young in age, but he's also like very young in personality. He seems like that cause he walks around with no shirt. He's got that dog with him constantly. You know, the kids relate to him better than they do to their mother. So he kind of has, you know, he's the younger of the two, right? And in this group, he is the youngest of them all. And so I was like, how do they expect Ryan to blend in with this older group of people who are, you know, the men are all, uh, I'm assuming like established in their careers. The men are probably the, the, um, the breadwinners and they want Ryan to somehow blend in with these people and socialize and socialize with these people. Like that was just, wasn't going to happen. I felt like he was completely uncomfortable the whole entire dinner. I think he was uncomfortable the whole entire night. Like he really didn't want to be there at all. Um, there was a scene where he was, uh, he took his napkin and he tucked it in his shirt and Dr. Chen was like, what what are you doing? You know, take that off. And then Heather in her confessional, you know, mocked him. She took her scarf and she tucked it in her shirt or she laid it on her, sh on her chest, you know, making fun of Ryan. And I'm like, this guy is already extremely uncomfortable. If the man wants to tuck his napkin in his shirt, let the man tuck his napkin in his shirt. I thought this was supposed to be everything about Heather Dubro is like very formal, very, um, you know, like, uh, structured, um, very un like just stiff. And, um, I'm trying to think of the right word, but it seems like you go into her house. It looks like a business building. There's no warmth in her home at all. 
it's huge. It's beautiful. The decorations, the interior designing is, you know, breathtaking, but it just doesn't seem comfortable at all. I remember in, a, in the very beginning, in the very uh, first couple of episodes, there was a scene when I think it was Coco, her youngest, was going to the door to open the door for someone. And the door was huge. And, you know, she's like, you know, she's a child. So you see this child opening up this huge, heavy door. There is nothing about her home that's like inviting that when you walk in there, you feel a sense of home because it's just so clinical. But anyways, yeah, that's all I have to say about that. Um, we got a lot of, we got to know Ryan a lot more. And the more we see of Dr. Janet and Ryan, the more we're kind of getting a picture of, you know, what kind of like what's going on. I think this marriage is doomed. I don't think Ryan is really interested in staying around or keeping this marriage going. I don't think he's interested at all. Um, I don't know if he's just like socially awkward or he just didn't care enough or if he was like stoned on something. I don't know something natural but not marijuana I, I don't understand but if this is how he is if this is his personality I'm shocked that they stayed together as long as they did but at this show might break them anyways that's my review thank you so much um if you made it this far I appreciate you more than you'll ever know uh please don't forget to rate the video and um uh, if you want to leave a comment leave a comment that's fine and I will definitely talk to you later bye